and welcome to another edition of Inside the Burrow, the FAU podcast for and by fans. Uh, we've been away for a little bit, but we thought with spring football starting back up that we would uh, start up again. So uh, some faces, you may remember, there'll be some new faces along the way, uh, but uh, we still have Jack with us. Say hello, Jack. What's up, Al Nation? How's it going? Uh, so Jack's, Jack's still with us. He's doing a lot of work, uh, for the board with basketball and he's still, uh, he's still hanging around. So, uh, now we have a, one of our newcomers, uh, a guy I've known for a while and you guys will get to know, uh, as time goes on. Uh, this is our, our, I guess, I don't know. I want to say analyst, but, uh, our new guy on the forum, Mo, how, how you doing, Mo? Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so uh, probably I'd say over a month ago, we started talking about starting up the show again, uh, really just because there was a lot to talk about, especially with National Signing Day, but our schedules were just really busy and we weren't able to, and we thought we'd take the chance uh, with spring football. This would be a good opportunity to uh, to get caught up with everything again. So we'll be putting out episodes every, I'm not sure, we, we might do it every week, maybe every two weeks. Uh, depending on how our schedule goes, and uh, but there'll be a couple episodes throughout the spring, um, and and maybe wrap things up with the spring game in a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, so there's there's certainly a lot to talk about, and we'll we'll dig into it as we get further along in the episodes. But I think first, uh, first and foremost, uh, the kind of speaking on, on different perspectives that we have uh, in our uh, in our fandom and and uh, and where we are, the the news of the Kiffin hire. And kind of what it meant, uh, what it meant to us. Uh, me personally, uh, for some, some of you know, some of you don't. Um, but uh, I work for the university, and uh, the Lane Kiffin hire has certainly, certainly piqued interest. Um, when I'm either you know wearing a work shirt or something like that off campus, or I'm if I'm uh, uh, even out of state, maybe doing some work, th- things like that, out of the area. Now people know who FAU is and hopefully it's going to be for the better um, and not for the worse uh, moving forward. But I think it's certainly one of the things sitting back as, as the hire was happening. Uh, one of the, I think the coolest things was like the FAU was on sports center for like a large portion of time. And I think that was, especially as an alum, that's something that's, um, that's pretty cool. I don't know. How did, how did you guys feel? Jack, how did you feel about, uh, the lane hire when it when it first happened and as it's happening now. Well, well when I first heard about it, uh, I was at work. Um, I was away from my phone for a few hours actually, and then I look at my phone around noon. I'm pretty sure the news broke around ten o'clock in the morning. Check out my phone around noon, and I just see Twitter is completely blown up. Um, a lot of my friends on Conference USA Twitter are saying, "Oh my God, Jack! Like, is he dead? Why hasn't he said anything yet?" I have no clue what's going on until I keep scrolling and scrolling and I see the ESPN breaking news update. Um, And since that day, uh, everything has changed when it comes to the football program, when it comes to athletics, when it comes to university. Um, Up here where I'm at in Tampa, I wear an FAU shirt and people now know that's that school in Boca Raton where Lane Kiffin is at. Uh, they used to think that was a school that got in a massive brawl with the University of Miami about a decade ago. Uh, so every, everything has changed for the better. Uh, and I, I, I'm on board with that. That's awesome. You, you can't, you can't um, really dislike that right now, despite, you know, some negative news that's going on, um, which we'll talk about later. It, it's still definitely good to have our name out there. Yeah, for sure. Mo, Mo, so Mo, uh, to kind of uh, introduce Mo a little bit, Mo's been, uh, uh, I've known Mo for, for quite some time, and he's been, uh, eventually kind of followed me into uh, to fandom as an FAU fan. So he's more of a recent fan. Um, but uh, I don't know, as, as more of the, the recent fan, uh, as, you know, uh, in, in the past year or so, what was it like more on that side of, um, like, when the news broke? Uh, I thought it was very exciting. Um, there's uh, definitely a lot of excitement around the program, a lot of hype. Um, I think that uh, it brought a lot of publicity. Uh, you mentioned uh, it being uh, uh, broken on ESPN. Uh, Fox Sports was reporting it also. 
So it definitely brings a lot of uh, publicity um, to FAU and gets their name out there. So I thought it was a, a great move by FAU. Yeah, it's um, I think still when you search on, on Twitter, especially as, as some of the uh, news keeps coming up uh, about certain things that are, that are happening that are involved Lane Kiffin, there's still some Charlie Partridge apologists uh, out there that are um, – uh, wishing he was still here or that we should have gone another direction. I think um, I, I'm certainly not surprised. I think there was a lot of people that, that were surprised. Um, but this, I, the, the biggest thing I think is President Kelly. I think OWL fans that are excited about this can thank President Kelly because he is, um, he's aggressive. Uh, yeah, I, I have 110% confidence in President Kelly. Uh, leading the athletics university uh, as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah. He's, he, I mean, he, again, he, he comes from Clemson. So he comes from, uh, he was there for like 25 years or something like that. So he yeah. comes from a place wow. where football is King, where like people, they spend the money to, to get a good football coach. Um, and they kind of, he, he, he comes from, from that kind of pedigree. And you think that, that Pat Chun coming from Ohio state, he was there for, like 15 oh, wow. years. I mean, he, he was there for a good time. Um, you would think he, he would have that kind of desire, but it almost seems as if uh, Pichon is more like, I guess, like CEO as far as like just making sure that everything is in its place. Okay, we're going to get some funding here. We're going to make sure graduation rates are good here, things like that. But President Kelly was like, Lane Kiffin is there you go get Lane Kiffin, whatever the money has to be, um, you go get it. And it's basically the salary pool from the previous coaches was doubled. You know, his, his salary, I think is like nine fifty, nine eighty, something like that a year. Short of a million while Partridge was what? 400 K I want to say. It was a little over 500, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. His last okay. year. So it doubled. Absolutely. Yeah. So the FAU stepped up. I mean, FAU is certainly, um, uh, certainly made it a point that said, all right, we're serious. We're not, we're not taking an assistant coach anymore. We're not, um, you know, we're not going to take an offensive coordinator from a, from a, um, another division one school. Like we're going out and we're getting the best available person. So that was, that was pretty good. Um, uh, I, I think I'm excited. And uh, again, you'll always find those people that are, are Lane Kiffin haters. Uh, and I think later on we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to dig in, and maybe get some other people on the show and, and, and do a segment called why everybody hates Lane Kiffin. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see, we'll see what we can come up with there. Um, but I guess, you know, kind of, kind of moving on after that. Uh, and this, this uh, episode, we'll focus more on, on coaches and introductions and things like that. And we'll dig into to spring practice. Hopefully there'll be a, re a roster released soon or, or leaked or something like that. But uh uh, speaking of the coaches, uh, basically the whole coaching staff is gone with the exception of, I want to say, Gare and Justice. Yep, Justice is, is right? still coaching the O-line, but everyone mm -hmm. else is. But, gone, I mean, yeah. e everybody's gone. Um, even, even Jared Allen, Graham Wilbert, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. Jared Allen uh, moved. I think he moved back to Oklahoma, and for those that didn't know. Um, who was one really the original owl uh, um, from way way back in the day, early days, and then uh, Graham Wilbert had had stuck around as a graduate assistant for a couple of years, and he uh, he's moved on to he followed Charlie Partridge to uh, Pitt, so I think he's a graduate assistant there, an assistant coach or something like that. Um, but I don't know. I mean, certainly uh, we've got a, a couple more higher higher profile. Um, Coaches with Chris Kiffin, uh, Monty Kiffin, who came. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not as kind of in in the know as far as uh, how good our coaches are. You know, how great they're going to be or anything like that. But I don't know. Is is there any kind of one coach that sticks out to you that that you're excited about, or or you have any comments on? Um, I am really pumped about Kevin Smith, uh, the UCF uh, great. We're running back for shattered records over there in Orlando. Uh, coaching our running backs, our deep, deep 
core of running backs that we have. Uh, he's widely respected in the state when it comes to recruiting um, in all facets of coaching. And to pull him away from UCF when now we're, we're becoming ambitious and trying to go after UCF and USF and UUM and others, you know, the bigger schools in our area, um, I, I think that's a, a fantastic hire, fantastic hire all around. Yeah. Um, I'm going through uh, – I pulled up the the coaching roster here. And uh, I mean, even, even just – well, if you don't mind, Dan, just getting coaches yeah. away from uh, bigger schools, like getting Kendall Bryles uh, away from Baylor for the exact same position here at FAU, uh, getting Chris Kiffin away from Ole Miss for the exact same position at FAU. Uh, that is huge, huge. You can say what you want about what's going on in Baylor and Ole Miss's defense being player, uh, you know, one or two player heavy. Um, but their credentials there are something that we have not seen at FAU since Howard Schlottenberger was up in the breezeway trying to get players to walk on for the football team yeah. over a decade ago. Uh, that, and that's just, just a complete 180 and that we've done from three or four months ago just because of these hires when it comes to perception and everything else is, is remarkable. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Chris Kiffin uh, is definitely something uh, to look at, especially with uh, Monty Kiffin coming in as a defensive assistant. I mean, he, you know, everybody remembers him from those great defenses at Tampa Bay. You know, yeah. He won a Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator, so – you know, and the defense kind of has nowhere to go but up anyways. <laughs> but, uh, That's true. But, but you mentioned, uh, um, you know, Kendall Bryles coming over uh, and Lane Kiffin. Um, just upgrading basically at every uh, coaching position is, is a good thing. Um, and, and, and I think a necessary thing also um, with, you know, USF hiring Charlie Strong, FIU hiring Butch Davis, M Miami Mark Richt, you know, and uh, – you know, Jimbo Fisher is up at FSU doing a really good job. Um, and uh, so I think it was necessary. You can't allow uh, the, the program to fall behind these other programs because if you do, it could, it could really set you, you know, one year of falling behind could set the, the program really back two, three, four years um, in, the, in the recruiting game and, and, and everything overall uh, in the football program. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And I think that's, that's also I, – I, I'm curious to see if, if FIU didn't get Butch, what, what we would have done. I think there's, there would be less pressure to bring in somebody like Lane Kiffin. I mean, we probably would have brought in Butch Davis, um, which I'm still not the biggest fan of, of his anyway. He hasn't coached in like 15 years um, or whatever. But um, you're, like, you're right. I mean, every I, – I remember reading a stat when – uh, somebody pointed out that now every single coach in for, for FBS football in the state of Florida has either won a national championship as a player or as a coach, you know, like we couldn't with, with, with how competitive with USF getting Charlie strong um, and Butch getting FIU specifically uh, or FIU getting Butch um, we, we would have fallen behind, you know, we, we couldn't bring in the next Charlie Partridge and say, we're building something in three years. You know, we, we couldn't do that. So that's a good point. And not, not to forget, uh, Coach Frost over at UCF, uh, just in a matter of months, he has completely rebuilded that program up in Orlando. So we're talking about all these other coaches in the state of Florida. It's funny how UF with Malcolm Wayne uh, now has probably uh, the most shaky of relationships uh, with their fan base, um, I want to say the smallest name uh, because Frost is still, you know, not a household name yet. Yeah. But it's interesting how uh, they're falling behind because of the moves of all the other uh, schools south of I-4. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um, it certainly, yeah, it, <coughs> it, it propelled us. And people now, when you say FAU, people are going to, people are going to know. Um, so, um yeah, and, and you both mentioned the, the Kendall Bryles hire, which, I mean, I don't know. I, I, 
the, the president made a com- comment about this last week, I think, um, who basically, he, a very kind of lawyerly answer. There was like, at the time of his hire, at the time of his hire, we had nothing to be concerned about. But it's like, I don't know, I, I've talked to some other people, other fans, and it's like, there's a lot of offensive coordinators in the country. You know, I, I, I understand kind of being aggressive, but it, it, perception is reality. I mean, you're going to hear Bryles, you're going to hear that name, and you're going to think of Baylor. And right now, Baylor is only – there's only negative things coming out of Baylor, um, which people could probably say the same thing about FAU. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm hopeful that – I mean, he, he seems like a nice guy. I've talked to some people um, – there that have met him said he's the nicest guy you know you follow him on twitter a great family guy you just i don't know i i think there's i would have preferred we wait like one year because he, he probably wasn't going anywhere nobody no, not many people were, were calling him so I, I don't know that that that's kind of my initial thought is it just seems too it's a risk that we didn't necessarily have to take not in our first year you were talking about how uh, President Kelly was being aggressive with Lane Kiffin. He was definitely uh, aggressive with Kendall Bryles to the point where he might have been too aggressive with the dumpster fire going on over there in Waco, Texas, because it, it is a dumpster fire. Yeah, you, you got a good point with that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but hopefully he brings a good offense. And, and one of the things that Lane said he wanted to do more of that he didn't, he didn't do enough um, I think he said he learned this from Saban was to be more of a CEO and be more of the head coach and not be the head coach and the offensive coordinator. So um, I can't remember if, if he said he'd, he'd be calling plays or not, but um, that may benefit us um, uh, so that he can kind of take a step back and, and make sure things are happening the way that, that he knows. Cause I don't think there's any doubt that kind of his football mind. I don't think there's any doubt that, that he's great. Um, it's execution, it's off-field things that, that are, are kind of puzzlesome. So, um, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll wrap things up uh, here in a little bit, but there's a couple, uh, a couple things uh, that I, I, I almost feel like we could also have a segment called uh, Why is Lane in the News Again? Because <laughs> <laughs> ever since he started, there's been – I don't know. It seems like every every week, every other week, there's some sort of article um, that started with uh, with I think it probably started with the Club Boca thing where uh, he was out at Club Boca, which I've never been to Club Boca, but Jack's our resident Club Boca expert, so we can expand on the situation a little bit more. Okay, well, this this place um, it, it used to go under a whole bunch of different names, off of Powerline and Palmetto. Uh, sacred, uh, a whole, whole bunch, a whole bunch of different names, and this one place is known to be the, oh man, not just a college bar, the underage dance club. You know, <laughs> this is where you would go when you just moved in, like your first week of college, and you just want to go to the most, for lack of a better phrase, ratchet place possible. That's where you go. That's 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 the place we we used to go to. Um, and to see a upperclassman there is <laughs> like you just found the Loch Ness monster. To see someone over thirty years old is is like you just saw a leprechaun. And then you see Lane Kiffin walking in with you know two freshman girls on each side. I mean, you just you just found a pot of gold. With that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think that that to me it was it was made a bigger deal um, than it was. I think he probably – he doesn't know what Club Boca is. He, I don't know. Maybe he was going – there's an Olive Garden right there. Maybe he was going to Olive Garden and said, hey. There's an Olive Garden, yep. You know, uh, let, let me go – Let me go. Ch- I hear some dance music. Let me let me go check out the scene. Out. Yeah. I mean, uh, hey, he's, he's, he's single now. Um, you know, he's, he's a man that makes his own decisions. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's weird. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> as someone that is, is young uh, and would – reminisce about going to these places i think it's freaking awesome yeah that's so what other places can you say your college football coach has gone to the place um 
where your most ratchet memories were your freshman <laughs> more year. Uh, not many places. Not many places. Yeah. Um, and also, I think it's as long I'm I'm totally cool with it, and as long as you know that's all it was was some pictures with those teenagers essentially. That's cool. I mean, you go there. Holy crap! That's Lane Kiffin. I want to go take my picture with him. You know. Um, I don't know. So, so that was, that was the, the kind of first welcome to Boca thing. And, and I think you, you, you said it, Jack, he's, he's single now. And like, he could, he could never go out in Tuscaloosa. You know, he, he, he's basically not almost a prisoner. Um, not necessarily, you know, not to that sense, but like uh, to that extent, but he couldn't go out. He couldn't go out for a drink, things like that. Every, everybody knew where he, every, everybody knew who he was. So in Boca, he's, Fortunately, a little more free, especially in certain areas. Um, well, he, he he couldn't go out in Tuscaloosa, but Joey Freshwater definitely that's could. True. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but how many times have we had college freshmen be able to recognize our head coach? Yeah, I you remember. Know, that's, that's, that's a pretty cool actually, thing to, to happen now. Um, Partridge did uh, in one of those kind of in-game I, mean, I can't remember if it was an in-game video or it was like a, an off-season maybe it was a promotional video uh, for football where they went around Partridge went around asking players about who the football coach was and they had I mean there was no idea that the joke at the end was like I'm the head football coach and the kids would be like oh my gosh I didn't, uh, yeah you're right I saw you in a picture you know like that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore. So um, was it was it anything like the Kiffin video? <laughs> <laughs> that man, that that Kiffin video is. I feel like got somebody in athletics fired. <laughs> um, hey, but you know what? They played that on ESPN over and over and over and over again. You know, talked about yeah. Owls recruiting. So any publicity is good publicity, I guess. And, and number one uh, recruiting class in Conference USA, I, I guess it worked. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say that it's like – and now now they can play it off as, oh, it was intentional and blah, blah, blah. Even though I have a pretty good authority, it, it was certainly not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we can play it off that way. And uh, – did he go back to Club Boca the, the morning or the night before, and that's why he was kind of – That's why he was <laughs> out of it. Uh, yeah, you never know. But uh, yeah, so th there's a couple other things, and, and we'll move on. Uh, certainly, if if you haven't checked out, I can't remember who did it. I don't think it was SI, um, but somebody did an article uh, while he was uh, house hunting, and it was a very kind of in depth and candid view uh, of Lane Kiffin, like of what his life is like now as living by himself without his ex-wife or without his kids, you know, in South Florida. And it, it was certainly, it was interesting because he doesn't, at this point, uh, he doesn't care what people think. Um, so he was talking about a $1.5 million. I think in, in the article it talks about his, his budget was between like three or $4 million for our house. When's the last time there, – there's never, ever, and who knows when the next time will be for an FAU coach to, like, l legitimately say, yeah, that's my price range for a house. So I want it to be on the water so I can have access to my boat and things like that. So um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to it for, for those that haven't, haven't read it. But that was another kind of news article that um, kind of gained some ground, but it, it, was certainly, it was certainly worth checking out. Um, and then the last thing, we'll, we'll kind of finish up here because uh, I, I want to kind of hear your thoughts on this, uh, the latest lawsuits. Um, so for those, that, for those of you that don't know, it, it, I think the, the file was made, uh, somebody was, was suing FAU, the state of Florida. And I don't think they were suing Lane Kiffin, but I think they were suing FAU. Um, it, it was all three. It was uh, Coach Kiffin, FAU, and the state. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, it was somebody who was, who was going to be an assistant, the assistant strength and conditioning coach or something like that. And um, they apparently offered him the position. Uh, and and the, the person who was a former 
uh, Alabama wide receiver who had, had bounced around in some other coaching places, I think most recently at Appalachian State, um, said that Lane Kiffin uh, lied to him and said everything was good with the job, and then at the last second, everything fell through, and so he's suing FAU for all this all this money, suing the state of Florida, uh, and basically, uh, and and again, I'll, I'll link to uh, I'll link to the video in the show notes, uh, so you guys can check or link to the the article or two articles um, that were done, but basically, uh, the what I think kind of happened is. The guy, everything went through, and I think kind of both parties are at fault for this. Uh, everything went through, but the background check, the background check didn't clear. And so this person uh, who was going to be hired kind of up and left, uh, apparently was moving his family. His wife quit his job. They were starting the process to come down to South Florida, and then all of a sudden they say, you can't start. Um, I don't know. Th- this seems kind of – Another thing where people are just going to talk down about it, oh, there's Lane Kiffin doing shady things again. And when, in fact, I would bet that he did he did absolutely nothing different than what any other coach offering an assistant coach, uh, assistant strength and conditioning coach would do. Especially just a few days before National Signing Day. Yeah, I mean, and, and that was that was another part that um, the – I think the – I'm sorry I can't remember his name. Uh, but he basically said that Coach Kiffin lied to him and used him to uh, to get some a, a couple recruits, which I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> – like that's never been done before. Um, I mean, look at Corey Bell going to USF uh, and uh, the former FAU assistant coach went to USF for basically a month for National Training Day and then – um, he's at UF now, I think. Yep, he's now at UF. Um, I don't know. So th- this kind of just thinks like, to me, it's like, and I don't know. This this may work ha- be how it works in the uh, the coaching ranks where they say, hey, everything's good. We want to hire you. Go start recruiting. That may happen all the time. But as like an employee, I'm not going to start working. I mean, may- maybe I'll send some emails or make some phone calls. But I'm not up and moving my family until like. I, I am officially like starting, like I have a start date. You're starting two weeks from now or something like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And I think that happens, uh, you know, with uh, any job, you just have to really like, you know, like you said, uh, make sure that the background check goes through um, and that you have a start date. You know, he could have interpreted Lane's word as you're hired when in reality he said, you know, it's almost done or something like that and not meaning that that he was officially hired but you know just as uh you know it's 90 percent. but until it's 100 like you said you have a start date or anything it's you know you just take it with a grain of salt i i, I feel bad for um his nickname is ac i'm pretty sure his last name is carter he was receiver um for alabama in the late 90s early thousands I can't remember his first name, either or Dan. But Anthony? Maybe. Yeah, okay, something, something of the sort. Definitely starts with an A. Um, I, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for uh, his wife, uh, his children. Uh, but it's, it's, just a, it's just a crappy situation all the way around. Um, but it goes to show that you just cannot – you know, begin to take steps to um, move and, you know, quit your previous job um, before you have signed that contract. Uh, that, I mean, that, that goes with any, any lesson in life, really. Um, it, it's sad that that's, this is how it's going to have to be, but I mean, that is what it is. Yeah, it was Antonio. Antonio Carter. Antonio. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, and and you're right. That that that's that's sucky. I mean, that's and I'm I don't want to. Um, I'm not laying. If anything, I'm laying blame on both parties because uh, Antonio makes it seem as if FAU was very insistent on everything is good to go. Go start working. We need that four star running back from Tallahassee. Go make it happen. Um, and they probably shouldn't have done that. But also, it's the week before National Signing Day, and 
all the other coaches that we know of, there was no problem, you know? Um, so it's, I would, I would fault FAU for what it seems. And again, we haven't heard FAU's take on it. Nobody has, I don't think anybody from the university has commented on it yet. I don't think that they will want to until the, the trial is over or however it gets settled. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's also, you know, you, you can't, especially if, if he was held up, if the background check fell through because of previous things that have happened um, in his life, and even though he's moved beyond them, he's got to know that uh, it's going to come up again. There's going to be some delay. Yeah, at least some questions. I mean, this isn't his first rodeo. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. We're not sure. None of us know what happened uh, when he previously coached uh, with the background checked, but you have to assume something uh, happened. Yeah. That's um, a shame. Yeah, it's it's just it's not a good. Uh, it's just not a good. Uh, uh, a good situation, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll see how it plays out. And, and there's two articles, one that was written by SEC country, which knowing it's from SEC country, it's probably going to um, bash Lane Kiffin. And then there was one from SI that was, uh, that was ter- just a, a terrific article that talks about uh, like the actual legal um uh, legal argument that Antonio would have against the university, against the state of Florida. And it, it seems he, it, um, if you read through that article, it doesn't seem as if he, he's going to have very much luck. Um, he'll probably be lucky if, if FAU will settle with him out of, out of court, you know, something like that. So, um, but yeah. Sure that, sure that uh, SEC article and say, oh, this happens all the time in the SEC. <laughs> they don't even bother going through background checks in the SEC. <laughs> Uh, or else they'd get no players. That's, that's yeah. Cool. Well, they they usually just hire uh, recruits' parents, and uh... <laughs> that's true. Yeah. When 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 you say hire, you mean give a car or something <laughs> of the sort. I'm not gonna name any names, but you know, <clears throat> Auburn, Mississippi State. You know, <laughs> other, other, other people. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. So, all right. Well, I think that's that kind of we uh, we wanted to get back in the swing of things and kind of hit on those, those big things uh, coaching wise and program wise, uh, which we didn't, we didn't touch on the, uh, the groundbreaking for our new indoor facility where there's no ground broken uh, and uh, it's not going to be indoors for the first year, but uh, Hey, we're, we're getting there. Don't, only the best for FAU. Uh, but uh, we, we kind of wanted to go over those bigger things. And, and like I said, moving forward, We'll um, we'll try to get an episode out every week, maybe every two weeks, uh, throughout the summer, and throughout spring ball. It, kind of as as needed. We'll go from there. So, do um, you guys have any any last thoughts? Any any final words? No. Okay. Um, we'll make sure to make. Sure to to what? It's 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 a good time to be an owl. I was going to say this earlier. Uh, last time I remember. FAU got so much coverage on ESPN. It's when Carl Pellini called for a spike on fourth down at <laughs> UM 2000. Was that 13 or 14? I don't remember. I, I'm trying to block that out of my mind. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and now look at us. Yeah. Come a long way. <laughs> That's true. Um, all right. So uh, definitely make sure to, to check us out uh, at on Twitter at Inside the Borough. You can email us. Um, as well and uh we uh we'll be with you guys throughout the summer throughout the spring and um we uh we hope to hear from you guys and uh, i guess that's that's all for tonight go out